there seems to be a lot of shame around sex in general about like speaking on it with family members or friends. Yeah. Why is it okay that we see these hot models, these OF girls, these twerkers online everywhere? Like we see that everywhere, sometimes doing very lewd things. Mm -hmm. But then when someone like myself comes on and talks about conscious sexuality and sacred sexuality, we don't want that getting out there. I've been banned on every platform. All right, guys, Janelle Gordon here, tantric sex expert, first person I've had on in that industry. So thanks for, for uh, coming on. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah. We got some juice to get into, right? Can't wait to get ed educated on this topic because yes. you don't really. Sex educated, right? Yeah, you don't hear about this really. It's very niche. Yeah, which has been problematic for me on social, mm. but I'm learning. Yeah. I'm learning so, how to kind of go around. So, so what drove you into this? Did you have a, a sex life that you weren't happy with or? It was much deeper than that. I think if you look at anyone today who's been, you know, in some kind of interesting career, they're like yoga or spirituality, there's always some pain or trauma kind of attached. So mm -hmm. for me, it was a very like intense, you know, traumatic life. And I don't like to go into details of it, but I had some, you know, dissociation problems with my sexuality mm. and a lot of shame. I felt like if I had sex before I was married, I was going to hell. Mm. And if I, you know, all the things that, the dogma has been preached to most people who grew up in a religion or faith-based. And we feel that and your body keeps score, your body remembers. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to heal and then I wanted to feel embodied. And I think that word is interesting. Like I wanted to feel deeply connected to every aspect of my body and my sexuality and to be able to connect with someone else on that level. Right. And I know there's a lot of people out there that share that sentiment, you know? Tons. There, there seems to be a lot of shame around sex in general about like speaking on it with family members or friends. Just speaking on it in general, like tell me, like answer this question, Sean, you're on social everywhere. Like yeah. why is it okay that we see these hot models, these OF girls, these twerkers online everywhere? Like we see that everywhere, sometimes doing very lewd things, mm -hmm. lascivious things and very scantily clad. But then when someone like myself comes on, and talks about conscious sexuality and sacred sexuality, we don't want that getting out there. So we've banned me on, you know, I'm like Andrew Tate. Like I've been, I've been banned on every platform. This is my sixth account I was texting wow. you on, Are right? Are you serious? Yes. That's crazy. So when you say there's shame, the shame is so deep at a subconscious level, we can't allow something that is so powerful to be so connected and so embodied. Mm. They won't allow that. And yeah. they is whoever you think they, they are. They don't want that, right? So yeah. conscious sexuality, what is that? Conscious sexuality is what you just, what you basically what you stated, being able to be in your body. And I think that's a huge thing because men dissociate from sex too. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they're so fixated on how do I last long enough, right? right. How do I like not go over, how do I pleasure her? Or a lot of times men are stressed, you know, heart attacks, things like that. There's a lot on their plate. Mm -hmm. So men and women both dissociate. So I think being in your body, being fully connected to your body, to your breath, being aware that there's someone next to you. Mm. A lot of times in sex today, we're using each other's bodies just to masturbate. Mm. We don't even know the person's in the room with us, but we're doing something together and someone finishes and sadly for women, they don't. So <laughs> conscious sexuality is, you know, bringing the God, the Shiva, the divine, whatever it is you subscribe to into sex. Mm. And I know a lot of people don't like that because they think sex and God should be separate. Mm. And I say, no, you can use sex to go beyond sex to get to God. Wow, that is interesting. Right? So how does that work? That's a concept, that's Tantra. So <laughs> we don't have enough time for that, but I can tell you the long and short of it is it's it's about destigmatizing the shame around it, owning that your body was created by God and God wants you to experience pleasure because he wouldn't have made you with all the anatomy you had if he didn't want you to experience pleasure, right? Mm. And that in that moment of pleasure, like everyone go back to their last climax experience mostly men, we'll just touch on that shortly. But in that moment, you are so in a state of bliss. You're in a state of union. You're in a state of oneness. You don't even know your name if I asked you mm. in that moment, in that split second. And that's Shiva, that's God-like consciousness. Wow. And so that's what, as tantrics, we, we want that. We want the divine masculine, the divine feminine to come together in that moment of climax together we can create, mm. we can manifest, we can do whatever we want. We can play with the energy. Powerful. And 70% of women don't experience that climax, right? 70% of 
well, here's, let me break this down a little bit more specific. 70% of women are only experiencing clitoral, can I say that? Yeah, I think or so. I, you know, <laughs> we'll find out. CLIT. Um, they're only experiencing a climax through that mod- that modality only. Mm. So, and you might say, well, that's not so bad, but it is. And I'll explain why. The clitoris experience, if you will, I don't know if I can say that, but that or or that climax, I'm choosing my <laughs> words here, y'all. I'm, st- I'm trying to help the editors. That climax is the McDonald's of climax for women. So it's the fast food. Mm-hmm. It's up and down. It's very similar to a masculine climax. Your climax only lasting a few seconds when women actually do experience them. Theirs are longer, like almost double. Mm. And so when women experience like that superficial, we call them explosive climaxes from the clitoris, it's it's cheap. It's like there and then gone. Mm. And so if you ever have been with a woman, which I'm sure a lot of you have, <laughs> and you've noticed after she's had like that clitoral stimulation and climax, it was like she was craving more. Mm. She wanted to go more. Even if you finished, she was like ready to go again. Yeah, yeah. It's because that um, pleasure is is fleeting. It's not opening. It's not internal. It's not on the inside. It doesn't like open her up to receive more into her femininity and to really experiencing the flesh of hormones and things like that because it's just up and down. Mm. And so 30%, approximately 30, it's like 20 something, are not orgasming or not climaxing rather at all. Jeez. And that's a high number. That is pretty high. So you have the very small percentage between, you know, that like 10% that are actually having implosive, you know, multiple full body orgasms. They're just, women aren't having them. Wow. So why is it so low, you think? Is it supposed Um, to be that low or is it? No. Every woman, you you have the ability, not you, but woman, Mm -hmm. has the immense ability to experience pleasure in their body. Look at how complicated our anatomy is compared to yours, right? right? And if I ask the average person, can you name three parts of anatomy on the yoni, which is a Sanskrit word for vagina, they're going to tell you maybe two at best, right? They don't really know what goes on down there. And a lot of the reason, that's the number one reason I would say, is women don't really understand their yoni. They haven't explored it. A lot of women say it's gross. They don't want to see a mirror of it mm-hmm. to be naked. Most women like the lights out when they're having sex. Mm. I'm sure you've experienced yeah, this. Yeah. And, and it's like they don't want to talk about it, like you said. A lot of shame. So know thyself. Like how a lot of shame. If you don't know your body and you don't explore it, how can you expect a man to bring you pleasure, mm. right? So that's the, the first one. The second reason I would say is shame, huge shame. And a lot of that shame comes from religious dogma. But the other part comes from trauma. We know one in every uh, five women has experienced some kind of abuse, assault, mm-hmm. trauma, ex- et cetera. And so that stays in your body. Mm. And a lot of women, when they have sex and they have th- this time, they just shut down. It's like women tell me all the time, I leave my body. I don't even know I'm there. Like I just tell them, when is it over? Wow. And this happens more than what you think. And then the third reason is the use of, and I don't know if I can say this word, um, um, vibrators, yeah, yeah. things that turn on and off. It's a desensitization of a woman's yoni. Mm. How can you expect a man to perform in remotely the same way, like 350 degrees, you know, horsepower, or whatever, <laughs> then and it's like crazy. And women are foregoing, you know, we know they're foregoing marriage and kids, mm-hmm. you know, in 10, in the next five to 10 years, there'll be more unmarried, childless women than any other time on the planet. Dang. And so we know women are career, career, career driven. Instead of being in a relationship, they'll just use a, a vibrator. Mm-hmm. And easy, then again, yeah. on the chance they do get with a man, they're so desensitized from the shame, from the trauma, from inexperience, not knowing their own body, not exploring their own body. And then you tack on the, the vibrators. Mm-hmm. Men are losing. They're not going to be able to make this woman have a climax. No way. Mm. Like, wow. good luck. Maybe the external, the cheap fast food one, but if you could have McDonald's or if you could have a ribeye, which one are you choosing? Right. Plant-based. So neither, but for most people, that analogy makes sense, right? Mm. Yeah. So we got to tackle this problem then. Correct. Correct. That's where tantric sex comes in. That's where it comes in. We get people back into their bodies and, and we do this with practices like yoni massage and coming to my retreats and we get men and women really connecting on really deep, intimate levels, intimate, not meaning sex. People think intimacy is sex, Mm -hmm. but they're totally not the same thing. Intimacy means closeness. It's connection. It's like the raw vulnerability of someone. 
And we don't see that today. Everything is fake. It's filters. It's this, it's that. It's you're giving your best version when you go out on dates. And then when six months into a relationship, you don't even know who this person is. Mm-hmm. You're like, I, this isn't the person I met. Yep. Because they didn't want you to know who they are because they don't even know who they really are. Mm. So we like we unmask. That's one of the things we do every night as a theme. And one of the nights we unmask and we let people see ourselves authentically. Whoa. And that part is scary because yeah. most people have never done that. I'd be really scared. actually. Yeah. Just to, you know, do some of these practices like soul gazing and things like that and yab yum and things where you're very, you're very intimate. It's almost more intimate than sex. And you feel like you've known this person after the night's over. You're like, I feel like I've known you my whole life now. Wow. Just from breaking down those walls. And then, of course, dealing with the sexuality and the body, that's a whole nother thing. But first, we got to just get people vulnerable and authentic Mm. and present. We're not present anymore because we have these today, right? And there, it's a dopamine hit, right? Yeah. We know that. So are there single people going to your retreats or how does that work? We have singles. We have a mixture of both singles and couples. Okay. And it's interesting how that dynamic plays out. I feel like it's always about 50-50. So people come and meet at mm. the retreats. Wow. You know? What a way to meet someone. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> like, hey. And then, you know, people have relationships after. And and I've learned also that after the retreats, people are meeting the loves of their life. Really? Because they just cleared that energy. They've opened up. So maybe it wasn't with the person that they were doing the activities with, the exercises, but they got to a, a vibration, you know, energy. They got to an energy of being open, being vulnerable being ready to receive. And most women are so closed down. They're so shut off. They Mm want to be in control. They want to make the money, bring home the bacon. They want to be catered to, but not too much. But then they want to also call all the shots. Mm. That sounds like a man, right? Yeah. Like, why are we like, what? So there's a real problem. And then with the men aren't off the hook either. You know, we have a weakened lowest estrogen and I think the history of ever. Testosterone. I'm sorry, testosterone. Yes. Lowest testosterone and estrogen dominance, rather. Mm -hmm. And so we have these beta men who will fall. They will literally cave at the drop of a hat. (laughs) If a woman says, I don't want you doing that. Okay. Happy wife, happy life. No. Yeah. That, that, That kind of thinking... That, that is what we have to shift. We have to restructure the, the nuances of masculine and feminine, divine masculine. Di- we have to create those barriers and people don't want those barriers. They want everything to be blurred now. Yeah. There's no gender. We can all be whoever we want. Well, I want to be Kim Kardashian, her wallet at least. <laughs> like, can, can I just identify as her today? Yeah. And that's what, and that's the world we live in. And so of course we're going to have sexual problems, right? And, and is causing some problems like is is the epitome of like the most dopamine hit right yeah. it's and then what it does is it and i'm sure you've had like specialists on here that help men with the addictions but like what happens is it is an addiction mm-hmm. and what happens is these men because listen i get guys younger than you coming to me for help with ed problems wow my youngest client was 21 holy crap I'm like, I should be a prime. Bro, here. like yours should be like up every hour of the day. <laughs> like, I'm ready. Who's ready? Like, this is. And I asked him, I went through the checklist to find out what was going on. It's mm. And so he, and, and then other clients who come in, it's like they get so fixated on that scene. Like, to have sex, it has to be this and this mm. and this and this shot and this. And then when they get a real woman who's not that, who doesn't look that way or doesn't reenact that scene, then they can't do it. They can't last. They can't get it up because they need that hit, that dope, that dopamine hit that got them off in the first place. And it's less effort. Mm. You don't get rejected. The women aren't rejecting you. You're paying them or really not really paying anymore, right? It's all yeah. free, right? Depends, yeah. It depends on like and stuff like that is free, right? Yeah, it's free. But OnlyFans, a lot of guys are dishing out money there. Because they're not getting rejected. Who's going to reject you when you're paying them money? <laughs> right? Yeah. They have no communication skills. They can't leave their house. They, they're in, like, they're incels, right? They're, they're addicted to that hit that gives them that next climax. And that's it. And then when it's over, if you, and I've had guys come to me before and I said, listen, and they've told me, I gave this woman like three grand in like 15 minutes. And I said, listen, here's my program. I will charge you X amount, even less, but I'm going to teach you the game on how to actually un-F that and how to not be in that situation mm. where you value yours, and then they wouldn't spend it. Wow. To, to get them out of that loop, why? 
because you have to do work. You have to do work on yourself. You have to face the parts of yourself as a man that you don't like. You have to come to grips that you're kind of a woman, mm. you know, you're spending impulsively. Who does that? Mm. Women, mm. right? You're a beta man. You're a woman at best. So it's, we have problems. Yeah. And then total 180 here, but semen retention and no fapping. That's like the other side. Um, well, that not really, because think about this for a moment. You're 27. You're no new to, I mean, I don't know your sexual history, but yeah. it, you've been around women. I, I know that. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've been in positions where you've been tempted and you've had that sexual energy thrown in your face. The most challenging thing for a man to do in the world isn't make a million, isn't to make a million dollars. Mm. There's men who do that all the time, multiple millions. The most challenging or the biggest flex to me in the world is a man who can retain his semen. Mm. Because if you say in the moment of your climax, don't do it, like you need to bring that back into your body and pull that energy in and up, how many men can do that? Slim to none. I personally know men who do it because I train with them. They're my masters, they're my colleagues, mm -hmm. but it is a vigorous, vigorous training regime to get there. So we'll start with the no fapping and I have some notes here just to stay on track because I can get off. So no fapping that movement, you remember that took off. Yeah. It was huge. And it was like, what did you know it as? Just don't like, masturbate, right? Just don't masturbate. No. Yeah. And I believe it was no sexual activity. I've seen sites that said both. Basically, don't masturbate. Don't watch. And then if you do that for 30 days, everything's going to be 30, 60, 90 days. And you're going to be cured. Yeah. No fap November. <laughs> Correct. And so, and so what we found was like that helped some men, but if we don't replace, okay. So if you know anything about like how the brain works, the brain works in like patterns, mm -hmm. right? And it connects this synapse when there's enough data to do so. So in <laughs> you have three things that are like needs that are being met, you know, it could be the need for variety. There's different girls, there's different positions, certainty, the need that I'm always, I'm always going to get aroused. Mm. I'm always going to get high, you know, and then significance. I feel like the man that I, I know I'm not. And then I know I can't be because I'm paying this girl on OnlyFans. But so it's like meeting three needs. So it's an addiction. Mm. So unless you like, even if you stop for 30 days, that doesn't solve the point that you're still getting your needs met by. It doesn't, it just like puts it under a shelf, mm. you know, yeah. you might've exercised some self-control, but it's like the morbidly obese person. That's like, oh, for this Thanksgiving, I'm going to sit it out. But then she goes back to eating like the same. Does that make sense? It's no, like, it's relatable. Cause my issue with that, cause I tried it is wet dreams. Well, so that, yeah, it's almost like you're still finishing anyways, you know? And that's funny. And I just like <laughs> got water all down me. That was not on purpose, y'all. But yeah, it's because, well, that's a whole nother thing. That's like diet and things like that, because it is still in, it's still in your like, okay, we'll explain this. I'll, let me explain that in a moment, the difference. Yeah. But basically, so that's no fapping. Edging is when you're having sex, you go to the point of no return, and then you come back down real quick. And then you do it again. Mm -hmm. And you do it two or three times, but in the end, you still climax. Yep. Like that's it. Then we have semen retention. What is semen retention? It's not ejaculating at all for a period of time, but occasionally doing it. So again, like the no fapping. So mm -hmm. you might go 30 days and say, I'm just not gonna ejaculate at all. No handy J's, no sex, nothing, mm -hmm. right? It's not happening. But then you go back to it, right? Now, the tantric retention is completely different. So we go on the time frame of Montak Chia, who is this ancient um, like Taoist tantric master mm -hmm. who talks about not just him, but how he explains it is that men shouldn't ejaculate every so often according to their age. Okay. So say you're in your twenties, so you're good for every four days. Mm. If you're in your thirties, uh, it's eight days, forties, 10 days, fifties, once a month, sixties, not at all. Whoa. Like you shouldn't be. And here's the why, which is why I'll explain about the wet dreams momentarily. Because what happens is when you ejaculate, it's an anatomic reaction that happens at the base of the spine, which is why in your sleep mm -hmm. it happens. That can be cured with a little bit of change in diet and some postures that move the energy upward. So very like you want to go a really solarized diet, like a yang diet, meaning I don't want to get into it. It's too much for now. Okay. But basically that can be fixed. But it still happens. It's an automatic reaction, right? Mm. Climax happens in the brain, right? Because 
I could climax right now without you touching me. Really? Yes. And there's women, there's Tantra masters who do that. And that's their claim to fame. Wow. But for me, it's like, how's that really helping you? Is that helping? Them? It's just showing, it's not just showing off. To me, it's like, oh, I show you that I have the power and connection. Yeah. I can do it. That's impressive. It is impressive. But how's that helping your sex life? Yeah, it doesn't. Correct. So, <laughs> but so with that being said, the tantric semen retention is we never like ever, ever climax again meaning not climax, ejaculate again. Mm -hmm. We learn to separate the climax from the ejaculation mm. because they're two different entities. It's just like a bad habit that you've just done all your life. It's just a reflex, but we can train them. It's just like women. We can train our yoni muscles to actually experience, you know, climax. We can train them to, to, um, uh, to, to do squirting. I don't know if I can say that to, you know, do yeah. what we call callas. We can train that. So the reason why it's so different with just no fapping and semen retention and tantric retention is that no fapping, you just put it on pause for 30 days, no handy J's and no. Yeah. And then you have the edging with that's just more for fun to mix up your sex life. Yeah, yeah. And then the, uh, the semen retention says, I'm going to stop for a period of time, but I'll do it every so often. Now, most tantrics, they say, this is my life force. They believe that it's called your ojas, mm -hmm. O-J-A-S, which is like, here's an example. Men in their like what, 50s or 60s, what happens to their erections? ED, right? No more, right? They don't have the vital energy to get that, yeah. to get that flag to salute. It just doesn't happen. And so what do they end up having to do? They go see doctor and ask them for the, the, uh, the Viagra. Viagra or Cialis. And by the way, don't ever, seriously, do not ever take these rec like recreationally without going to see your doctor. Um, I work for a doctor who does men's health and it's it can be very detrimental because if you have any circulation problems, you're done. So they believe that it is life force. Every time you ejaculate, you're using losing years off your life. Wow. And so for the tantric years? years off their life. Just from one ejaculation? Yeah, because it's energy loss. Holy crap. And so they say if you want to have a longer, like more virile, like more like just integrity, like this this like divine connected energy, and you're not beta, you don't fold, you don't fall, like you preserve your ojas, you preserve mm. your semen. So the biggest flex is tantric retention. Anyone can make a million dollars. Can anyone retain their semen? Yeah, but how did they have kids then? Well... That's a great question. So most tantrics don't procreate okay. because they know that's taking light years off their life. So they just don't have they kids? They don't have kids. Like wow. I was an outcast because I had a child. Okay. I was considered like the black sheep. Yeah? Yeah. Because it's for women, it's a huge life, a huge um, ojas loss. Think about the leucoria and all the blood and everything that comes out mm. when you're having a child. So and it then, takes years off your life to have a child, basically? Absolutely. Wow. And energy wise, I mean, ask any mom who's had a, who's carried a child, nursed them, delivered naturally, all that stuff. You don't feel like yourself again for like three, four years. Damn, that yeah. long? I I finally started feeling normal again after four. Holy crap. Why but is that? Because the. It's a lot of life force, it's a lot of energy. I mean, think about it. You're creating a life. Yeah. You know? And then not only are you creating that life and cooking that life, like in the bun in the oven, but then you're also like, projecting that life out of you, mm. emitting it out of you. And at the same time, you're losing fluids and the life force. Life is in the blood, right? Mm -hmm. And so for women, the blood, the leucoria, which is the what happens before menstruation, the blood, that's life force. So you're losing that. Mm. And then, of course, you're nursing, which is, again, taking vital energy from you. So, yeah, I mean, these are... These are things that the tantrics typically don't do because they their goal is just to have more of that oneness. Mm. And so if they're having sex for hours, meditating and doing, you know, uh, sexual transmutation, which Napoleon Hill talks about in his book, Think and Grow Rich. Mm -hmm. In order to do that practice, you can't really have a kid. Mm. Like, what am I going to do? Meditate for eight hours, then go make my son breakfast and come back and have sex for another eight hours, then meditate for the last, you know, like eight, like... Where, where is he? Right. And so most tantrics, they just forego having children. So you're meditating that long? When you're in the tantric pra pra practice, yes, absolutely. Wow, eight hours. Yeah, you're doing hatha, traditional tantric hatha yoga, which is not what you're going to see in the yoga studios. 
it's a specific. It's all energy work. You're mm. you're basically taking your body and just using it as a vehicle to tap into energy centers to build that energy up and to move it up mm. to higher consciousness. Right? You just think about it, like even like the pyramid. Lower energies and the higher up you get is higher. Right. So the body is the same way, and that's why men, you know, are having problems with. ED is they don't have that vital energy in the first energy centers. Mm. So the theory with sexual transmutation, that's basically you don't ejaculate, right? And in return, you have more energy in other aspects of your life. That's part of it. The sexual transmutation, like the real, the, so that book everyone knows, right? The, the one thing he didn't talk about is he didn't say how and like what is actually happening. Mm -hmm. He just kind of told people like you shouldn't be having sex. And if you want to make, you know, make these deals and, and yeah. do your dreams and stuff. And so people were like, okay, but the practice was taken from the tantric yogis. I mean, everything was. Mm. And so the practice is not just to not ejaculate, but it's in the moment of climax because we retrain your body to actually still have a climax without the ejaculation. Mm. That is very challenging. Yeah. And so in that moment of a man doing that, Shiva and then the Shakti energy, both having a climax without the energy, the Oja loss, you can create, you can wow. sexual transmutate, whatever you want. And so there's things that we teach. There's like this like moment of the seed energy. It's really powerful. And you can say these mantras, these prayers, and you both have the vision at the same time. Yeah. But you can't do that if you're only last. Let's be honest. The average man is lasting five to seven minutes long. And if the woman is capable of having a climax, it's taking her 20 to 40 minutes. Holy crap. So if you're talking about pay gap and all that, we have a huge climax gap, right? Like, Yeah, that's three to four X. Correct. So how do we get like, who wants a five minute man? I don't, like, <laughs> most people want, well, actually a lot of women probably today are satisfied with that because they don't even want to have sex anyways. Mm. Most women don't feel sex. A lot of them are having, as I said, the trauma. So they're just like, when is this over? Right. So five minutes is not enough. How long do you need? Well, we just, I just said like 20 to 40 minutes to at least get a woman warmed up enough to the idea that she can relax into wow. a climax. So we need to educate men on how to last longer then. How to last longer. So should we do it? Let's do it. All right. I'm going back to the notes because <laughs> I want to stay, I want to stay on focus here. But, um, okay. So the main thing I would say, and I think that they tell you this and a lot of things is you really have to have like an outcome. Like, why do you want to last longer? Do you want to last longer for her? Mm -hmm. Do you want, do you really care about her pleasure? If that's, if that's not a big deal, no big deal. Or do you just want to last longer for yourself? Mm. Like always having an outcome for what you want and anything you do in life will 10 X your success rate. Okay. So I'd say really know your outcome. Do you care about this woman? Do you just want to be a playboy? Know why you want to last longer. Cause the why is going to get you through the times when it's really challenging, mm. right? All right, the second or the main thing really I would say after knowing your why is testicle massage. You should be doing daily testicle massage in massage in the shower. That's like a tongue twister. <laughs> and everyone takes a shower yeah. every morning. So I tell my clients, you know, you literally take the testicles and you just sort of like start from the um, the top and just massage the testicles down. You go up and you're just breaking up that that tissue in there. It helps with circulation. If you want to have children, even if you don't, just having that healthy cir healthy circulation is life, right? Mm, yeah. And this is helping to kind of disperse some of the sexual energy energy rather that's just stored because mm. the sperm sits in the epididymis for seventy two days, Damn. which is in the testicles. These are like so many tongue twisters, y'all. So you want to move that around. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, I've heard of ball slapping, actually. So There you go. So, I, I mean, we, we don't teach that, but hey, <laughs> whatever works for you. Another thing that they can do if they want to really take this deeper is they can um, do like ice, ice. Like, you know how you do ice for your like body? It's the yeah, same thing. It's like the same a cold concept. Punch. You can just ice your testicles. Really? What does that do? Vasocirculation. Just boom. It just like creates like all the capillaries just open up and then you're you're getting that like dispersion of the sexual energy but you're also getting like a healthy flow of circulation mm. and that's what you need to have an erection right now this other one i think is very interesting a lot of people are not going to like it it's but i'm going to say it anyway it's meat hmm. you've got to cut down your meat i'm not telling you to be vegan or plant based i know dave asper was just on here <laughs> and he was like telling everyone to eat loads of me. I always comment on his stuff too. I'm like, I like most of your stuff, but not that. Listen, 
you have to just think about what is happening when you eat meat and how long it's taking your body to get rid of it. Mm. I have asked multiple doctors from various um, uh, disciplines because we were always taught this information, but I really wanted to know. So fish is taking one to two days to, to digest in the body. Chicken is taking three to four. Uh, beef is taking five to seven. Whoa. And pork, seven to 10. It can stay up into your body that long. Oh my gosh. So if you're consuming meat, 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 because you want to be this alpha man, but then all those alpha men in the gym doing roids and eating tons of meat, they can't get erections. Mm. And their testicles shrink. I know this happens because they come and talk to me <laughs> afterwards. So it's a vasoconstrictor. If your body's using all that energy to and that blood flow to digest the meat that's sitting in your body, and just think about your health, not even your erection. When when you pass, mm -hmm. they cut people open, and they're finding five to twenty pounds of undigested fecal matter in the body. Holy crap! My colonic, I just had one last week. I know TMI, but I don't really <laughs> care. She told me that in rare cases, forty to 50 pounds. That's disgusting. I assume more obese So people. it's just stuck in them? Stuck. And that's from meat or? From meat. Oh my God. Meat and heavily like processed foods. Wow. But mostly meat, meat, like beef and pork take the longest. So cut back on the meat. I'm not saying to become vegan. I know it's not sustainable for everyone. And I never preach what I know won't work. I want you to do things that you can work. Mm. I say just restrict it and just track it. Try it for a month of no meat and see how your erection quality improves. Hmm. And then test it. Be yeah. your own test dummy. So, but as far as like hands-on approach, what can you do? The number one thing you can do when you're in the bedroom with the lady, if you're the one of the lucky guys who's actually getting laid today, because <laughs> we know like one in uh, three guys under the, from the ages of 18 to 27 aren't having sex. Which is high. Which is high. So if you're in that good percentage, then you got a woman in bed. She's ready to go. Do oral on her first. Hmm. Do oral and spend a little bit of time there and maybe do some finger work as well. And if you don't know how to, check out my YouTube. I give you videos. Please don't <laughs> wing it. It is awful if you do it wrong, guys. I've heard from Bruh. everyone. So yeah, know what you're doing. But the whole goal is, again, we want to dispel some of the sexual energy like we did in the testicles. Mm -hmm. We want to do that in the yoni. If she climaxes, which most women can from, from clitoral, right? Yeah. So if you do some oral on her, she might climax once or twice, and then you've massaged the testicles, and then you've done all that, and you actually go in to try to have sex with her, you're going to last longer just by those things alone. Really? Yes. Okay. And then the third thing you can do is um, the breathing. But breathing, everyone says breathing, but like, oh, yeah, I'm breathing. It's a conscious breath. Mm. So like when, say, say you're going in and you're like, your in stroke. So you can practice inhale. And then as you're pulling out, you can practice an exhale. Interesting. You can play like, now I'm not coaching everyone one-on-one, -on -one, so every person it's different, but I want you to be consciously connected to your breath. Yeah. You can also say like every three strokes, I'm going to inhale. So like inhale, one, two, three, hold, exhale. Mm. And your exhales always want to be a lot longer. Now, I will tell you, so the breath, there's so many things you can do, and that's why you got to come to a retreat, mm -hmm. work with me. I, I give you a perfect script for you. But what you can do is in that moment that you're feeling like I'm about to go over the edge, you take a breath there, you pull up on the perineum. You can either pull if you have the control with your muscles, like I'm pulling up on my perineum right now. You can try it too. Go the ahead, perineum? Sean. Perineum. What's up? Good question. I'm so glad you asked. So <laughs> perineum is the space that sits between the anus and the testicles for men and, and okay. the vagina and the woman and the anus for, for women. So that area, I guess they call it like the T word. I don't think we can say that. Do you yeah. know what I'm talking about? T word. T, the t, t tank. Can you say that? Oh, I've never heard that. Yeah, it's like a it's a vulgar term, but it's like that area. So if you can contract that yourself, great. But if not, you can use your two fingers and you just press up, mm -hmm. press up. And as you press up, so you're like, and you just hold it and you vision everything going up. Mm. Why up? Because the energy is down here, right? What do yeah. we want to do with the energy? We want to bring it up. Where are men strongest in their energy bodies? Like this is a lesson in chakras and everything today. For a man, for Shiva energy, they're stronger in their energy bodies up here. Mm -hmm. They're not stronger down here. Why you guys don't give birth? You're <laughs> not the earth, right? You're the cosmos. 
the energy wise. So you want to move the energy up to here. That's why men typically tend to be more like perceptive. They're more like focused. They're more the one track, right? Yeah. Not saying women can't, but this is that junior rule, general rule of thumb. So leave me alone y'all for that. But men typically are more tuned in. So you want to pull up on the perineum, press it if you can. It will feel, it will feel a little uncomfortable and just breathe and hold that as long as you can. Mm. That right there is going to help you last longer. And then you can start cycling that during your sex. Okay. But the main thing, another last tip, and I could give you guys so many, I don't have enough time today to do that. I know you're on a strict schedule is you want to stay in this like 50 to 70% range of pleasure. Mm. So we get into the whole chart at my retreat, but essentially if not having an arousal was zero and having a full climax was a hundred, you want to stay in the 50 to 70. That is hard. Mm. Because what happens with most men when it starts to feel good, they're like, oh, yeah, I'm going there. I'm going down that path, right? <laughs> yeah. They don't back off. So you want to kind of stay in that area because it's like, I don't know if you're into cars, but say you're in a Lamborghini mm -hmm. and you go up to like 100 and then you decide, I want to push the brakes. How easily is that for, for you to push the brake? How easy is it for you to stop quick? It's, it's going to take some effort right? because you're going so fast, right? Yeah. So that's how it is when you're trying to last longer. If you're staying in that 50 to 70% range and you start feeling, okay, okay, I, I feel like you just rein it in. Mm. Find the perineum, find your breath, focus, move the energy up and ride again, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're in the 90 and you feel like 95, 96, I'm good, I'm good. I, you try to hit the brakes, you're going to lose the ejaculation. Yeah. And even if you're not training semen retention, you just want to last longer, stay in that safe range. It will it will help tremendously. Mm. Super helpful. Thank you for yeah. all that. I, think people, I know that was in depth. Yeah, that was in depth. That meditation about moving the energy up, that's actually similar to Joe Dispenza. Correct. It's all like, like it's all the same. It's all different, but it's all the same. So yeah, you want to you want to take the the sexual energy which sits in the perineum that's the first chakra and the second energy which is the sacral or the se I call it the sex chakra right mm -hmm. you want to pull that up and you can pull it up the front or pull it up the back however you can pull it up mm -hmm. right people are like oh in order to meditate you have to no you need however you can meditate is how you need to meditate right like right. why are we shaming people for not being <laughs> spiritual enough yeah. that's why I have very little to do with the yoga world mm. you'll never see me on a yoga person's podcast you're not a fan of yoga I'm 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 I have a master's in yoga let's be honest my dar my guru is Sri Dharma Mitra who brought yoga to America he's mm. 80 so I love yoga I don't like the spiritual dogma that they teach mm. I want to bring Tantra to the masses. I want someone who's never set foot in a yoga studio to know, hey, I can control my ejaculation. I can have more power in my life. I can have more control, more money. I can be a more present father. Like, that, they don't teach you that in yoga class. No. They're fixated on who has the best Lululemons, who's more flexible enough, <laughs> who's doing this, who's dating who. I don't care about that. Like, I want people to have a rule book to, to help them have lasting, passionate relationships. Mm. And in order to do that, you have to to see the parts of yourself and talk about the parts of yourself that most people won't talk about. Sex and intimacy. Yeah. If you say sex, God, or money, you are instantly ostracized from any room you're in. Wow. It's true, though. It's a controversial topic. And Tantra says all three of those, we're going to mix them together mm. and have them for breakfast. We're going to use sex to go beyond sex to get to God and get more money. And people don't like that. Mm. Again, that's why they don't want me out there. I love that. Do you get a lot of guys coming to you with sizing concerns? We do. Um, we get people that are like very curious if they're big enough, mm. right? And I think that this is probably the age old question that everyone wants to know. Does size really matter? And more importantly, am I big enough, mm. right? Yeah. Because they don't, who cares about someone else, right? It's your lingam. Lingam is the Sanskrit word for, peni or for penis. Mm -hmm. So they want to know, am I big enough? Now, this question has been answered. I've scoured YouTube. Obviously, this is my niche. And it's interesting to see what, what's out there. Let me just tell you this. Size absolutely does matter. But it's not just the size. It's the size and the shape of the yoni that you're paired with. That really makes the difference. Mm. So 
The Kama Sutra, which is a, a practice, an ancient practice that we pull from in Tantra, we pull a lot of things from it. Most people think the Kama Sutra is just this manual about sex. It is that, but it's so much more. So they have a whole segment on size. Now their theory and concept was that there's three different sizes for men and three different sizes for women. And in my retreats, we have this whole funny way we do it. I won't spoil that for you. You got to check my Patreon or come to a retreat. But basically, it's a small, medium, and large, mm -hmm. right? So the small version, we're saying, and again, this is no shade. This is just <laughs> numbers. Is we're saying it's like four to five inches, right? Is that soft or hard? This is this is hard. Okay. This is erect. I had to think about this for a moment. <laughs> I love that word, erect. It sounds so sexy. It's an erect lingam, right? Okay. So four to five inches. Now the medium version would be five to six inches or okay. so, right? And then we have the large version, which is approximately seven to nine, right? Mm -hmm. And we're just vacillating the numbers. We're saying one to two inches hard, okay? So those are small, medium, and large. Now, you fit into that category. I know it because I know I've done so much lingam study, like size study. If you go on my phone, there's so many emojis of like all these <laughs> studies of like size and who the biggest size in the world. It's in Africa, you know, and 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 and, and in the South. There's a few states in the South with really big mm. lingams, and then it, I like I can tell you demographics, all of that. So I know a lot about this, but. It's not about if you're five inches or if you're nine inches. It's about the size of the yoni that you're paired with. Mm. For instance, if you are nine inches long mm -hmm. and you're paired with a woman whose yoni, meaning from entrance to cervix, is only four inches, mm. right? She's the small. She's the four to five inches. Is that going to work long term? No. No. Why? First of all, Guys will be like, oh, yeah, it's tighter, it's smaller. <laughs> but I promise you, I've talked to a lot of guys, and we've talked about their lingams. Like, yeah. I know. And from my own personal experience, like, if a guy has that big of a lingam, he wants to be able to have pleasurable sex with someone who can tolerate, I know that word sounds bad, who can take his lingam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've heard this term, like, bottoming out. Like, there's just nowhere left to Hit go. Hit the wall. Hit the wall, and you're like, like, I want to go further because you're not even in. Say you're that much in. Yeah. Right? So it just doesn't work. Are there certain positions that can work and can help? Of course. And then you have to flip it the other way. So I'm not just putting, you know, if, if a woman has a large yoni and yeah. say she is nine inches from entrance of yoni to wow, cervix. Wow, so you could have a nine-inch yoni? Well, we're, we're saying statistics, but I mean, she could have a longer canal, mm. but I don't know exactly if she's nine inches. I'm saying like the capabilities, because the most guys don't even have a nine inch lingam. Right. It's less than 1% of the population that have a nine inch lingam or more. Mm. It's like a point, it's like point, it's like half of a percent. It's so small, right? So I was just using the extreme for like extreme yeah, yeah, measures. But say she's seven, whatever, and the guy is only four. That's not going to work right. for, for them either. So you have to think, okay, maybe sometimes why the sex isn't working is because we're just not paired correctly. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying to divorce your wife if you're a small and she's a large. I'm not saying that. There are ways around it. And I think that's, what's, that's what we can talk about mm -hmm. next is what are the ways around it. Can well, the yoni adapt to the lingam, though, if you really can. like the person? It can if it's so the rule of thumb is you can go like small, medium, medium, small, mm -hmm. medium, large, medium, large. Got but it. you don't want to go the ends, small and large, large and small. Mm. Does that make sense? Because, yeah, yeah. yes, it can adapt. But over time, is it like, oh, here we go. Women don't want to have sex now as it is, <laughs> right? Like the average husband is is having sex when he's married approximately one to two times a month. That's it? Yes. Jeez. So imagine you do the number on what that is a year. Is yeah, that you enough? just said earlier in your twenties you should be having sex twice a week. Yeah, exactly, and that and that's with and that's even like the tantric philosophy of like ejaculating that yeah. much. You can you can have sex more than that, but just the amount of time. So you can have sex every day if you're practicing semen retention. You just can't ejaculate only twice a week. Does that make sense? Yeah. So so back to like it. You can play around with postures and props. But if every time you're going into sex as a woman, knowing like this is going to be so uncomfortable, is it really worth it? Mm. No. So for men, 
women have a part too, but we'll talk with men now. There's a few things you can do. One, you can do something, and I work with um, a doctor out of Newport Beach, Dr. Barr. She does these pee shots. Mm -hmm. I've actually sat in on one before. Mm. It was very fascinating. And the pee shot is basically your blood that's pulled out of your body. It's spun in a centrifuge. It's spun at such a degree that it turns it into a plasma, mm -hmm. liquid gold. They call it PRP, platelet-rich plasma. And then they inject that. They numb your penis. I think they should use more numbing cream just personally because I was there. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm just being honest here. That's the thing about me. I'll be a little too honest. And then they inject the penis with your own PRP. Now, if, if the client chooses, he can get a little mixture of Botox in there too. Mm -hmm. From all the studies I've done, I've researched a lot online to see what are guys getting out of this process. It's not cheap. I won't lie to yep. you. And it is painful. I'm going to lie to you. The <laughs> doctor tells you it doesn't hurt. They lie about other things too. Does it numb some of the pain? Of course. Yeah. But the t the closer you get to the tip of the head of the penis. Oh, it's at the tip? They do all of it. Oh, my. They do the shaft. Oh, they do, my God. Depending on what you want. Okay. Think If you want length and girth, they're going to inject Ooh. at the shaft and they're going to inject up. Right? Ooh. So exactly. I know. Like your face says it all. I thought it was I, just one in the vein I and felt, done. No, no. I felt the same way watching it. So they, the studies have shown, get this, this is amazing to me. 76% of PRP clients are seeing results. Mm. If not the first, this by the second time, thousand percent. And they're getting between one and two inches of length and girth. Wow. Results lasting up to nine months. Mm. And you have to understand, this is why I don't do fillers. I use my own PRP for my face. I do mm -hmm. vampire facials. I inject the PRP back into my body. Because here's the difference why. If you go and just get a filler in your face, that filler just goes away. Mm. But the PRP is actually encouraging more tissue, more collagen to be created mm. in the body every time you inject. So it's building each time you each time you inject. Right. So the results don't just go away. They they are it's encouraging more growth. If That's that cool. makes sense. More growth. <laughs> yeah, it's like tricking your body almost, right? Yes. Now if you don't have the money and you don't like needles and you just don't want someone injecting your penis, I, like totally understandable. <laughs> there's another method and it's called jalking. This is a tantric method. I go, I have a whole course on it. Um and we talk about it a little bit my retreats too. But basically it's a Sudanese um Technique and it's funny because I was talking to the Sudanese guy once and he was like impressed that I yeah. knew about it But the tantrics gathered it because they said hey this works. Let's do it Basically, it's a intense form of like pulling your lingam mm -hmm. every day with ghee or some kind of very emollient um, emollient um, uh, Lubricant mm. all organic so they use ghee because it was just it was just good for that and it's pulling and stretching and certain exercises that you do every day. And over time, they say that your lingam will grow in length and girth. Whoa. If you do this religiously every day and you spend like 30 minutes doing it. Interesting. So it's more time related, no cost, but obviously more time. And it's going to take time. Now, the tantrics and the Sudanese both, they would start their, their boys like at puberty. Whoa. Having them do it. Wow. And they have long... On average, they have look long, at the Sudanese. Right? You, you go go and do your homework. <laughs> go down there. And so look. there there are options now. Let's not get women off the hook. There's options for women as well. We can use yoni eggs. If you're curious about these, I have these on my site mm -hmm. um, that you can put in the body and do. It's like a workout for your yoni. Yeah. People say, "Oh, just do Kegels," and I always just tell them that doesn't work. Mm. If I sit here and do this all day. Is that going to work? No. No. I went to the gym this morning and I lifted like 40 pounds and I feel it. And I'm sore right now. Yeah. So that's what you want. So the, the the eggs are made out of like crystals, like amethyst or rose quartz. Mm -hmm. And so they're not only charged with the properties of amethyst and rose quartz, but it's a stone. So we're not putting plastic or silicone or crazy stuff that women put in their bodies today. Mm. And then you do exercises. And I teach you guys all of that. But so women have their part as well, right? So- Size does matter, but it's more about the size and shape that you're paired with long term mm. because you want to have sex. I mean, I hope so, right? Like, I know men want to have sex. The problem is women are on the fence. Mm. They want to have sex until they're married. And then once they get the ring and the money and the security and the safety, because that's important to women, then they're kind of not interested anymore, mm. especially after they've had a kid. 
then it's like, uh, I'm good. I'm taken care of. I'm fine. Right. And so we don't want that to happen because we know that sex, listen to this, is the only thing that differentiates your relationship from any other relationship on the planet that you have. Your sex? Yeah. If you're not having sex with someone, you're just a roommate. Mm. Don't kid yourself into thinking you're married. Right. Or you're just a glorified sugar daddy or sugar mama. Sex is sacred. And we should be having more of it. Mm. And so in order to do that, we want, you know, you want your body to be comfortable and you want to make sure that you're paired correctly so that you can have more sex and have those moments of meditation and oneness. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And you believe there's 11 forms of climax and people are stuck on the second one. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. There are 11 forms of climax. We obviously can't get into them today. But okay. So the reason why people are stuck on the second is the first and second. would One would be the clitoris. Yeah. The second one, what would it be? What do you think? Isn't it through penetration? The G spot. G spot. Correct. Most most guys have heard of it, right? Yeah. And if they have, like, they don't know, they've heard it exists. Some guys are like, where is this? Where do I find the G spot, mm -hmm. right? But other than that, you don't really hear of too many other kinds of orgasms, yeah, I right? Yeah, haven't heard of any. Yeah, and there there are many more. And so the reason why men get stuck on those two is because that's what's been propaganda like that's what's been given to them as propaganda of what exists women's mm -hmm. pleasure hasn't really mattered remember in the medical books they didn't even used to have like the uterus mm. like they they were just like oh this is for giving birth and that was it they didn't have the vagina they didn't have the yoni they didn't have the mapping of all the intricacies of everything they just had like you give birth here and that's it like so women's pleasure didn't matter and i think that's the biggest lie like women's pleasure makes them more feminine. It makes them all the things men want. Mm -hmm. More femininity, more receptiveness, more openness, more surrender. All those things that men are raving about that they want on all these red pill shows, but then they're not doing anything to help them. They call it a box. Oh, it's just a box. It's like that mentality is why we're only stuck on the first two, mm. right? So we know the clitoris and that's been recognized as the, yeah, that's a thing. And Women can have pleasure there. So it's almost like, I think it's also like a little collective subconscious thing. Like there's the clitoris and the G-spot. The G-spot, most people don't know how to find. The clitoris, most people can find. So you can have that. It's almost like women are like, yeah, I can have those two. I'll probably only have the one, but at least I'm having one out of two, hmm. right? Like it's that thinking. When yeah. you think that's, that's, if you think that that's not the truth, then you're misled about other things too, mm. right? So the biggest reason why we're stuck on these two is that I said it a little bit before, is women just don't know their body. They haven't explored. I talk to women and they say they don't want to do self-pleasure on themselves. It feels weird. They mm. feel weird. And like doing it with their partner feels weird too. And nobody wants to do this work on good sex and intimacy, but they want it just to magically happen right. somewhere in the bedroom. <laughs> oh, he didn't make me climax. You know, it's like, well, did you show him what you liked? Did you tell him? Did you offer him? Hey, honey, can I show you what you like, what I like? How would you know what I like? You know, yeah. you're not my body. And I'm, we'll just say, I'm 30. You're 35. We've been having sex previously. Maybe if I show you what I like, I can help you. Like these concepts that people don't really do. Right. So, um, so yeah, the 11 forms are possible. Um, and the most opening of all the orgasms would be like, the uterine orgasm, the cervix mm. or the uterine orgasm. That's like the mecca of cli or sorry, of climaxes, if you will. Yeah. And so that's what we want to train women to have. That's a full body one, right? Yeah. It's like you leave your body. <laughs> like you go to that's how my son was conceived, if you wow. truthfully, right? Just that you're so open. And let me tell you this. This is why I believe other women aren't having aren't aren't opening themselves up to climax. It's such an unattractive experience. Like you are not in control of your body. You look crazy. <laughs> Sometimes the angles are so weird. Yeah. Your body's this, you're that, you're sweating, you're smelling. And women want to look good during sex. Women cares too much about how they look like. Don't get me wrong. I like looking good like the next person too. But if you really want to have those like intense, earth shattering, God connecting, Shiva connecting, or, or climaxes with your partner, you have to be prepared to give up to control to surrender your body over to him, mm. like literally. So if you can't go into sex with your partner saying, I will surrender my body to him during this 20 minutes or mm. five minutes, whatever, 
then don't have sex with him. And women will give up anything. They give their right arm over giving giving up control mm. of their body to a man. Trust issues. I was just going to say, they don't trust them. But more importantly, they don't trust their own body and they don't trust themselves. Mm. We want to point the fingers at men and say men aren't lasting long enough. They're not making us climax. They're not doing this. I don't feel... You don't trust yourself, sweetheart. You don't even know your own body, honey. Why are you point blaming him? Like, you do the work on you. Like, imagine if you have a woman come to you and be like, hey, listen, I just want to be honest with you. Like, I don't really know my body all that well. I'm working to discover it. I know you, how are you going to know my body? But like, let's go in this together. Let's have no shame. Let's like have times where we just like talk about what works for us sexually. Mm -hmm. And one night where we just like role play on each other, but we're not quote having sex. We are experimenting. This is like yoni massage, lingam massage on each other. So we understand what each other likes. Mm. So we can serve each other. People don't say that. No, people don't think like that. They're just like, how quickly can I get her in bed? When is yeah. she going to leave the next morning? <laughs> they think very selfishly, right? Yeah. And there's no room for selfishness in Tantra. Yeah. Tantra is a selfless practice of dying of yourself, dying of your ego, and showing the most vulnerable, authentic, ugly parts of yourself with that person who's doing the same. And in that place, you're creating some of the most beautiful, cosmic, climactic experiences you could ever have in your life. Yeah. A lot of guys approach you and they, and they ask how to get more BJs. Yes. And you have a controversial answer. I have a controversial answer. First of all, I think I think if you've ever had a good BJ, it's been transformational. Like your life is never the same, right? Like let's just be honest. And I think we have to call a spade a spade. Men love BJs. Why? Why do they love them? What it's do easy. you think? It's easy. And let's be honest. I'm, I'm going to go on my little diatribe here about men. I was talking to my neighbor about this in the pool yesterday. They were like, man, your son has it in for him. He's just like, being a man is, is hard today. Hmm. Being a woman is so easy. We go through life. If you're mildly attractive, you get, I get free stuff all the time. I don't even ask for it. Wow. I get people are treating me nice. Da, da, da. Like people come up to me in the stores and like, hey, I've seen you. Hey, can I buy your groceries? Get here, mm -hmm. go for it. I think it's easy to be a woman. It's challenging to be a man because a man has to, number one, solidify his place in society. If he doesn't have a name for himself, like if he wasn't born in the Lucky Sperm Club, if you will, he has to create it, mm. like you. Nobody gave you money and said, here, or maybe they did. No, I don't know. No. <laughs> okay, I didn't get that energy. Like, here you go, Sean, here's 12 million subscribers, and here's a podcast everyone wants to be on. No, you had to forge that. You had to put in the time. I'm sure you turned down women all the time because you had to be in here what? Building, working, yeah. right? So you're doing that. Then you're also taking care of family. Then there's all these nuances about men today. You're not able to express your emotions because then you're too feminine, but then you can't be too aggressive because then you're toxic masculine. <laughs> it's like, bro, like, can we just relax? Then they're poisoning you with estrogen and everything and plastics and in the meat, you guys are getting overloaded with estrogen. So you're constantly like, why don't I feel like a man? Right. Well, newsflash, you aren't because you have so much estrogen. <laughs> like, it's hard. Then let's talk about sex. Sex is much easier for women. It just is. As long as they don't have trauma, which we know they do, <laughs> but they're healed from that, it's relatively more simple for us. We just have to receive you. Yeah. For the man, you have to have enough relaxation, listen to this very carefully, to get an erection. So people think you have to be excited to get an erection. No. To get an erection, your body has to be in the parasympathetic central nervous system, which is the rest and digest, mm -hmm. not the fight or flight. Not a climax, you're in a uh, fight or flight. Right. You're in the sympathetic, right? Because you're excited, your, your blood, <laughs> yeah. everything goes, right? So all the things you have to do just to get an erection, then when you're actually having sex, you have to worry, am I hurting her? Am I going too fast? Is, is this too much for her? Oh, shoot, I think I'm going to climax again. I need to slow down. Mm. Like, there's all these things that are going through your mind. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So a BJ, you don't have to do any of that. You just sit there mm -hmm. or stand or kneel, lay, whatever, whatever the arrangement is, and you just get to receive. It's the one time in your life 
where you don't have to think. Yes, you have to get the erection. But after that, you can just get pleasure mm. and get for you guys. You don't need a lot. You need loyalty and you need a woman who's willing to like partner with you, but be submissive at times when it calls for mm -hmm. and just sex and pleasure. And it's important to you. It's just as important to a woman as being protected, being provided, feeling safe, being loved. Are all these things important to women? Being financially, yes. Men simple. They want loyalty. They want a woman who can preserve their legacy with them, create children maybe, and they want sex once in a while. Mm. So a blowjob for a man is easy. He just gets to relax and receive. Now women, here's the thing. I will say this. If your woman, your wife, your long-term partner, whatever it is, if she doesn't understand how important BJ's and or sex are to you, leave her. No, not really. <laughs> but like, maybe. No, like, you've got to, edu you have to educate her. Yeah. You need to take her to a retreat, something like mine, take her to get, get there. So she understands. Because for a man, this is everything for you guys. It's not bad. People demonize men for being wanting sex and wanting BJ's. No, they need that. They need to feel that pleasure. They mm. need to feel that release. They need to feel that like, I can just chill for a minute, right? Because yeah. in life, they're out fighting. They're fighting dragons. They're protecting, they're providing, they're preserving their legacy. And so I would say the best thing to get this from a woman is you have to have a heart to heart with yourself. Is my woman understand how important this is to me? And if she does not, I need to find a way to let her know. And mm. it might not be you telling her. That's why I say it might be going to retreat. It might be going to a therapist that is more sex like in this realm, like tantric or something. Mm -hmm. So that can be there and, and let women see. Because what happens with women is as soon as they get that ring, their stress levels whew, mm. lower. They're not in fight or flight anymore. Why? Because they're married. Mm. They have a kid. Even more, their stress levels lower. Why? They know they're going to be supported. Right? right? They know no matter what happens, they're getting a check. And then sometimes the baby comes, they let themselves go, and then they just decide, I don't want to have sex. And most women tell me, I do not want to do BJs. They'll do sex. They'll tolerate sex. But BJs are like off the table. Wow. For most women that I know, it's just not interesting to them, especially if they're married. Mm. So I think when you, you have to have these talks even before you get married. But if you're already married, I would tell her exactly how important this is to you. And telling sometimes means going to a third party and at the same time showing up as divine masculine energy for her, making sure that you're present with her. Present is directed, connected, focused energy towards her. No phones, no work, no kids, no homies, just her. Mm. And if you're giving her that and you're taking care of her needs and she wants for nothing, if she has a job, that's her prerogative. She wants to, whatever, but she's cared for. Her kids are cared for. And she's still not giving you that. Then at this time, I do think you have to reevaluate things. Yeah. Because it's like your basic need. And I think if if she really loves and respects you, she'll understand that this is an important need to you and she'll do whatever it takes to make it important to her. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's coming to see someone like myself and saying, hey, I don't like BJ's because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not good at it. It feels weird. I don't know. I've had a bad experience and work through it. Yeah, I love that. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's been I fun. I mean, that's it's a lot, but. Fun talking about sex. Let's segue <laughs> over to some of your podcasts. Uh, All right, let's do it. So let's do it. You recently went on Jubilee, right? Yes. And you were an anti-Trump supporter on that episode, which is I surprising was. because you don't I give was. me that energy. I don't. I know. You know what? Okay, so I will say this. I I had to promise that I had never voted for Trump, mm -hmm. which I never had. But I, I mean, I have a Trump sticker, Trump 2022 <laughs> magnet on my, or 2020 magnet on my fridge. So, and I live in Orange County. I live in Newport Beach and that's Trump land. Yeah. During COVID, we had no issues because we were just very conservative there and mm -hmm. we didn't follow what everyone else was doing. So I will say this. I was kind of forced to say like the lesser of two evils, right? Like mm. I was like, uh, I would never vote for Biden. Would I vote for Trump? Yes. I think that you can't necessarily like 
I was really good at arguing his downfall because mm -hmm. the evidence was just all there. And so I had to say, like, Stormy Daniels, then the journalist. These are two, I can't think of her name, but like, you know, the journalist lady. Yeah. Two different ladies from two different walks of life. F stars don't hang out with CNN journalists or whatever her journal, right. you know, they do not hang out. So for that, I had to say, like, come on, there's something there. However, I will say that when you look at a candidate, you can't necessarily say we're going to judge him off of his personal behavior, right? Look at our favorite president, Clinton, right? People felt like Clinton did an amazing job, mm -hmm. even though he was a Democrat, that he did great things for the economy. And he's still one of the most like known presidents as of late, right? Yeah. Like people respect him, even though he got a BJ <laughs> and lied about it in front of the world, right? And got caught lying. Yeah. People still respect him. Why? Because he was a good president, despite his indiscretions, right? And more not even his indiscretions, whatever he does with him and his wife, that's on them. But the lying about it was like what was right appalling for most. Right. So you look at Trump and you just say, listen, the man stands for values. The values that I agree with, that how I raise my son, family values, you know, these American inherently good values. And so you, you have to kind of judge him by that and by the job that he's doing in his presidency versus like what they're wanting you to see, the indiscretion and things like that. Mm. If it came down to it and I had to vote for one or the other and I said like, I would say neither, you can't say that, I'm voting Trump. Agreed. I'm never gonna vote Biden, no. right? And someone accused me of that on the debate and I didn't <laughs> like that they said that because I never said that. Yeah. So I know that was that's a tough one. But speaking yeah. of debate, you debated destiny too. What was the topic of debate for that? Okay, first of all, destiny got butt hurt because I called out his. I think they're split now. They Melina, split. Mal Melina, Melina. Yeah, yeah. I was on a podcast with Melina on Adam's show on Sauce Saucecast mm -hmm. with um, oh with Fresh and Fit when we Ooh. did that big that whole, that's a whole another story, right? When I did that whole debate, yeah, or the, there was like all the panel. It was fresh and fit, and Adam, and then all the girls. Which, by the way, Adam, you tricked me into that. You did not tell me that all those chicks were going to be there. <laughs> oh, you, you thought it was just you? Yeah, it was just me and a couple other girls, like the normal roundup, right? Oh, so you got dragged into like, yeah, they I knew see it, why but not. they like me there because yep. they know I cause the stuff, but I stir the pot. But so she was so like to me. I was like, I was just, I was appalled by her behavior. It was just so, she was cutting off the hose. She was mm. cutting off Adam. I don't know if you watched she it. She got a lot of heat for that one. She was just very, yeah. like, very masculine. And so I didn't know the situation with them. I didn't even know who they were. That was my first introduction. Got it. I have a life other than YouTube. I have a son. I'm around the world, the retreats. I don't really know. And so I wanted to debate Destiny <laughs> because I, I was told, she told everyone that she pegged him Whoa. on that show. And so I got on the show. And first of all, the first time I went on with him, there was another girl and they they ambushed me. And I was like, that's not fair. Like at least have me, let me have some other person. Mm. Like if it's gonna be a one-on-one, -on -one, be a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Why was it a two-on-one -on -one and you didn't tell me? So right away I knew Destiny was a beta man that he was like, like he was getting pegged on a regular. That behavior just showed that. Mm -hmm. Like what man comes to debate and brings a girl? <laughs> not a man, right? Yeah. Then the second time, he came on and he's like re ag agreed to redo it. And then he he got mad because of the whole pegging thing. And he's like, that never happened. That never happened. Mm. I saw a whole Reddit thread that showed that it did. Mm. And but nonetheless, in the end, he got really triggered because he just said like, oh, my thing was a scam and all this stuff. And it was simply because during COVID and I'll speak, I'll speak very openly about this because I like to have everything out in the open. During COVID, I had my business and I had my nonprofit. Mm -hmm. And we know COVID for everyone was very intense yeah. and you had to sink, ship, or swim. Like you had to like cut things off that you couldn't manage. Yeah, yeah. And at that time, my nonprofit was so small, it was grassroots. We never applied for a grant or loan or anything from the government ever. We only got small donations, mostly at Tony Robbins event mm -hmm. and a little few college campus and local things that we did. Never anything substantial. He accused me of being a fraud and f phony. Mm. And there's a whole like Reddit thread on that. My organization was a scam because we didn't file taxes during COVID because mm. we weren't even bringing any money in. Yeah, And I had to like 
focused my energy on the business. I still referred out the girls in the nonprofit to organizations of people I knew who had money. Because if you know anything about 501s, they're extremely challenging. It's it's another entity. It's another business. Yeah. So that was his biggest argument in me. And I was like, bro, that's the only thing you can pull up on me is that I couldn't maintain both a business and a nonprofit, like whatever. And he literally admitted on camera that his life would have been better had his son not been born. Whoa. I got him to say that. Holy crap. I didn't know he had a son. Exactly. With Mel- Melinda, her name is? No, with some, um, someone, with else. someone else. Wow. So I think that the whole, des- I think Destiny, I know he got really famous and I hear he's super smart and that's great. But I honestly think those, I think that all the men that follow him are in that uh, percentage of men that aren't getting laid. Yeah, that's the base. seemed like it got personal. I feel like you should have been just kept on the topics. You and know? I got, and I did mess up in that. I did mess up because it got so personal and, it hurt me mo- because I was connected to that. Yeah. And then I lost it and I, I admit it. I said, I got too feminine. I got in my feelings. I felt like I was also on my cycle at that time. Not a great <laughs> time. Not a great time to do a debate with destiny <laughs> on your cycle. And then, yeah, I should have just, I should have done better. The Tony Robbins team trained me, his media team, and I should have just stayed Dang. on topic. I'll set up another one for you if you let's want. Let's do it. Do you let's want to do it, it with destiny yeah, or someone else? Yeah, let's do it here. Because destiny is trying to come on. So Let's do it. Okay. Will it be just him and I, or will yeah, we have? Yeah, I won't ambush you with other girls. Yeah, okay. Sosnick, I like his show, but sometimes there's just so much like going on. It's so because I went on too, and it was me and like seven girls, and what I it? feel like I could barely talk. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. I'll do head to head debate. Oh, you went on with Adam. Yeah, it gets so side railed, dude. Yeah, because there's so many people. And I think Adam, Adam's such a gracious host, but sometimes I feel like he has to just say like, stop talking or they have to have a buzzer or something. You know what I mean? Cause they just like plow over him. And that's what Melina was doing that night. But yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Here. Uh, Anything else you want to promote or close Um, off with? Yeah, I do have a book coming out and I'm really excited. It's called your sex life, unleashing passion and intimacy for an orgasmic relationship. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited about that. And I have a retreat in Morocco. If you want to go in September, we have a few spaces left. Mm. We do applications. We do. We don't just let you come if you want to go. Um, and yeah, so if you're willing to invest some time, energy, a little money, come join us. It's going to be the most amazing experience yet. And that's that's basically it. Perfect. We'll yeah. link the, the retreat and the book below. Thanks for coming on. Thank you so much, Sean. For yeah, thanks me. for watching. Hopefully you guys learned something today that could change your lives. I will see you tomorrow.